welcome back to my channel my name is Brittany bundles in today's video i'm going to be going over how i felt right before i decided to transition from my nine to five to being a full-time entrepreneur um, i'm gonna roll the windows up just a little bit so that i might roll them up all the way it's hot out here and i'm in the school line to pick up my kids um I'm really not familiar with school lines because in Michigan, there really weren't any school lines. You, you know, literally pulled up and they would have, like the teachers would have um, the children separated by grades. And you pull up, you park in the parking lot, you go up, you get your child or your children and you get back in the car. Bus riders would get on the bus and that would be that. So car lines are completely new to me. I'm sure some other places in Michigan, they may have car lines too for schools, but um i've never seen anything like this from you know where i'm from but um so pretty much i'm going to be in the car line for about a good probably 30 minutes but hopefully the video is not this long so i'm not fully dressed um as far as like how i typically come on camera i have a t-shirt on because like i said it's hot but i have um gotten some comments and also some emails of people just asking questions about my transition from my nine to five to being a full-time entrepreneur so i want to take this opportunity to expound on that and i'll be doing more videos on that as well so if you are interested in hearing more videos or hearing more insight about that topic be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not already turn on your post notifications that way you are notified when i upload a video be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get right into it so i wrote myself just four bullet points that i wanted to go over i do want to say this um i once i decided that i wanted to start a business i definitely started thinking about quitting my job um the only thing is i didn't want to quit and not be able to pay my bills or feed my children as a lot of you know that follow this channel you know i have three children and when i first started my business i can't remember if my youngest son was born yet or not i don't think he was no he wasn't no he wasn't born yet um so I had two children at the time and uh, like a lot of businesses, when you get started initially, income is not rolling in consistently. And I had savings, but I didn't have enough saved where I would feel comfortable leaving that job and working full time for myself. I tell a lot of you all to make sure that you are planning for what it is you wanna do in life. So for example, if you know that you wanna quit your job and you know that you wanna go full time with entrepreneurship, because there is no guarantee with how well or how poor your business will do in terms of finances, you do wanna make sure from my you know, recommendation, from my advice, that you have money saved up just in case. And that's what I was working towards. So every day I would go to work and I knew in my heart that I was no longer fulfilled doing what I was doing. I knew in my heart that I really wasn't going to have that job for as long as I initially thought I would have. Like I initially planned on retiring from this particular job, but I didn't want that lifestyle. Like I wanted to be able to have my own time. Um, I wanted to be able to create my own hours, have as much time as I chose to have with my children. I wanted to be able to go to different field trips with them. I wanted to be able to um, be close to my family members and friends when they needed me and not have to rely on vacation time or hope that I could get off or hope that someone would switch schedules with me. I just, I didn't like that. And then on top of that, I also wasn't fulfilled at my job. Like I, I felt like there was so much more that I wanted to do because there was so much more that I wanted to do. And I was limited as to what I could do because I was hired for a certain position. And although some companies are more acceptable to the creativity that you may bring, um, there's still, in my opinion, like from my experience, there are still caps on you know how far you can use your creativity because I've been told by a lot of different jobs, we don't want anyone to reinvent the wheel. That's how I learned that saying from working in nine to fives, you know? And I didn't necessarily want to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. I just wanted to be able to use my creativity and use the gifts that God placed inside of me. And the place that I was able to do that was through my business. I was able to be myself. I was able to use my creativity. I was able to connect with people on a level that was fair, honest, and not saying that I couldn't do that at work, just saying that everyone has a different flow of how they want their employees to interact with their customers and clients. And I wanted to take sales at a different approach. 
I never looked at sales like a lot of my coworkers. I didn't believe in just selling just to sell and just to meet a quota. I believed in right matching the right person to the right product to actually find a solution for your customers and clients. So just giving you a little background, you know, I, I just, I didn't like how sales, that was another thing that kind of pushed me toward wanting to get into my own business even more full time. Aside from me wanting to spend more time with my children, I also wanted to be able to sell in a way that was solution relational based instead of, well, let me just sell because I need to meet my quota, if that makes sense, you know? I'll go into some other videos about that too, but I don't want the whole video to be about this. So when I decided to quit my job, I did have money saved up. I would take my checks and for a while, I just wasn't spending money on really anything. People would um, ask, you know, if I wanted to go to certain outings, you know, um, whether it's like a dinner or visiting family, people would invite me to get my, you know, my nails done with them. And um, sometimes I would go, but even when I would go, I would be very cautious of like the designs and the length that I got because I was just really like, I was really intentional and really, and really, excuse me, strategic about saving my money because I knew that I wanted to quit. Like I really knew that I wanted to quit. I got a few tax refunds back and instead of just, you know, not really paying attention to where the money went, I started to be very, very I guess the best word is intentional about my spending. I started to get on a budget. I was always pretty good with money. Like I was never someone that just blurged all of my money until I was that, you know, just on my last dollar or dime. But I became even more, um, even more um, selective with the type of things that I spent my money on so that I could build up my savings. So I built up a good amount of savings. Um, and what I would recommend doing is some people ask, you know, what's a good amount of savings? When I talk to people in my real, you know, real life, they're like, well, how much should I save? Everyone is different. Everyone has different finances and obligations. And so you ultimately want to decide what's a good amount for you. But for me, I wanted to have at least five to six months saved up for um, of my rent and also my car payment. And then I wanted an extra like two to 3,000 for like miscellaneous purchases. But I wanted to make sure that my car note and my rent would be paid up for at least five to six months. And um, at that point, I figured, you know, even if my business doesn't do well, like even if I don't make a dime for my business, by the time I got to like my third month, I could get another job if I needed to. So that was my men mentality behind the plan that I created. So I stuck to the plan. Um, as far as like my feelings, that brings me to my first point. The first feeling, the first feeling that I had was, um, first feeling that I had was um, fear. Fear, I was really scared. I didn't know what to expect. I was scared um, of leaving the job that I had been at for years. Um, I already had built up like my 401k, I already, was really good at the job and the systems and I had seniority and it was a great job to retire from. Um, I just was scared, fearful of leaving that job and starting, not even starting my business, but working full time for my business. I was scared about that, which a lot of people I'm sure can relate to that. You know, a lot of times when you try something that you haven't tried before, you are fearful. Um, but the way that I, I look at it is, you know, I know you've heard this saying, or a lot of you probably have heard this saying, but chances make champions. I mean, sometimes you just have to go for it and you have to be strategic about how you go for it. But, you know, if you have a plan and you stuck to the plan, you owe it to yourself to see what it could be. If I never took a chance to see what it would be, I would still be working at that job. I'm not saying that that would be the end of the world, but I know I would be miserable. I would not have the freedom, flexibility that I have now, even waiting in the car line to pick Okay, so um, what I was gonna say is, my phone cut off, but it's even a blessing for me to be in the school line. Okay, I had to change angles because I'm driving now and my phone just wouldn't stay propped up in the same place that it was at. But like I was saying um, before my phone cut off, it's a blessing that I'm even able to be in the school lines, honestly, because at my old job, I would not be able to take off to sit in um, these lines that are like 45 minutes of school pick up my kids like I, I just wouldn't be able to do that um 
And I also was fearful because I had family members in my ear saying, you know, that's crazy. It's crazy for you to leave a job with that good of benefits. You know, you're making almost this much an hour. You're not really doing anything. You get to sit down every day at a desk and you're going to give that job up. I mean, you have stability, you have this, you have that. And um, it, it just made me fearful. But like I said, like I say in a lot of videos, you ultimately have to decide whose life you're going to live. Are you going to live for others? Or are you going to live for yourself? Um, and do what it is God put in you to do. And when I say live with, for yourself, a lot of, you know, some people have come to me and said, well, are you living for yourself? Or are you living for God? You know, you know what I mean. I hope you know what I mean. I'm not saying, are you living for, you know, don't live for God. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is, in the aspect of talking about what person you're going to allow to decide your decisions, is it going to be you or other people? Even living for God has to be a decision or should be a decision that you decide on your own. It shouldn't be everyone else telling you what you have to do. You know what I mean? Because God looks at your heart. So it should be something that's coming from you ultimately. So at the end of the day, um, you know, I made a choice and I decided to stick with it. Was I afraid, fearful? Yes, I was. But I knew that I had a plan and I knew that, um, you know, God had me. I, I had faith that everything would work out and thank God it did. And if it didn't work out, I still had a backup plan, like I mentioned, where if my savings got down to a certain amount, I was going to get another job. Um, now, I probably wasn't, you know, may have not been what I was getting paid at previously or the rate that I was getting paid at previously. And I wouldn't have the same seniority. But like I said, that that's a sacrifice that you have to to decide if you want to make, you know, Ch champions take chances. Um, the next the next feeling that I guess I want to point out is excitement. I was really excited. When I put my notice in that I was leaving. I was super excited. I was just excited. I was fearful, like I mentioned, but I was also excited because I just did not know what would happen. I was super excited just at the thought of me being able to have a break from work and me being able to be free. Like, I just did not feel free at work. And everyone doesn't have that feeling. There are some people that feel so free and so empowered working. There are, but there are others that are like, look, no, this is just not it. Like, I, I want to, to, to do things differently and I want to be able to create a living for myself and my family or my family and I doing what it what it is I want to do you know what I like doing so I was excited I was excited for a new journey in my life I was excited for a challenge I enjoy challenges I enjoy um, overcoming obstacles I enjoy problem solving and I also enjoy being able to have that freedom and time with my children so I was excited as well I also was excited because I didn't know who all I would I would meet you know I knew that I was going to have to challenge myself like I mentioned a minute ago like I, you know I love challenges I was going to have to challenge myself to come outside of my comfort zone and to actually meet people and to talk to people on behalf of my business so I was nervous but I was also excited for that meeting new people um, being able to promote and advertise my business put more time and energy into my business more um, ideas and creativity into my business because I would have when I was working I would have a portion of my day that was dedicated to work a portion that was dedicated to you know family before work and after work and then a portion that was dedicated to my business and a lot of times I would have to sacrifice like my lunch breaks or um, sleep at night to really put the time needed into my business um, so that it could grow but knowing that I was you know about to be able to just have free time to put into my business and I did not have to spend eight plus hours at a job made me really really excited the next feeling that I want to touch on is uncertainty that kind of piggybacks and ties in with fear I was uncertain about quitting once I quit um, I just remember sitting on my bed thinking you know Brittany should you have done this you know when are you gonna really start seeing income you know, especially when my first, after I got the first check, after I quit, you know, a lot of times when you quit, there is a check that they send you because, you know, you are paid in advance a lot of times. And um, after I got that check, and then the next week when I didn't get a check, I'm like, okay, things got real. Yes, I have my money saved up, but I'm used to not touching my savings. I'm used to being able to have a good check. And I worked in sales, so we would also have bonuses. I didn't get a bonus check or 
a standard check. So I'm like, okay, things are getting real. So I was very uncertain, um, but I didn't let that stop me. I continued to push forward and focus on what I needed to focus on. Every month I had a different task, a different goal for my business. I would break those monthly goals into weekly goals, daily goals, and I would, I would stick to that, working toward my goal. And then the last feeling that I wanna to touch on is empowered. I felt super empowered once I started to see my business going in the direction that I anticipated it going in. Not only looking at the sales, but looking at the support that I was receiving from people that I, I didn't know from anywhere. Um, a lot of times when entrepreneurs get into business, they anticipate their support coming from people that they know. And a lot of times the stories are the same. A lot of uh, entrepreneurs support come from or came from people that they are and still comes from people that they don't know. And um, I was just so grateful and so excited and so humbled to see people that didn't know me interested in the value that I had to offer, whether it be through my products. And at that point, I was also doing um, wholesale. I wasn't doing drop shipping just yet, but I was offering wholesale services. Um, where people could buy a hair in bulk. And I had a payment plan. The payment plan wasn't through Sezzle. I don't think Sezzle was available at that point, but it was through PayPal credit. So, um, you know, I really enjoyed doing that. And I just felt so empowered. The fact that I was able to walk away from a job that a lot of people encouraged me not to walk away from, create a plan, stick to it, keep my bills paid i never have received thank god an eviction notice never had any vehicles repossessed nothing like that god has really been good to my family and i and i was able to produce enough income with my business not even focusing just on the money because i'm not a, a numbers person i was focusing on the goals and the action steps and the right behaviors and acting in integrity and i learned that what you put out you definitely get back and um I started just being positive and feeling, like I said, really empowered about my decisions. And that's why one of my favorite sayings is at first they ask why, later they ask how, because that, that's true. A lot of people that were saying, well, you shouldn't have quit your job were now saying, well, how did you do that again? Because I'm trying to get out of my job too. Or how did you quit do that again? Because, wow, I mean, you're able to get this, this and that, and you, you are working for yourself. So um, a lot of people, you know, will discourage you, not intentionally, but they will discourage you because that's their way of thinking that they're helping by giving you the advice that they will want someone to give them, but not knowing that their advice is coming from pure fear. And a lot of times people have allowed fear to control their life. And so if you're always taking what other people um, throw at you, and if you're always listening to advice and not thinking for yourself again, I'm not saying, and I'm saying this again because I say it in a lot of videos, I'm not saying don't take advice from others. That would be foolish to say. All I'm saying is take advice, but you don't have to apply every piece of advice that you get. Ultimately, you have to decide what you wanna do. And especially, you know, the people that you're getting advice from, especially if they haven't, um, if they're not the kind of people that are willing to step outside of their comfort zone to try something different or to go against the status quo or what's considered normal, um, then you have to ask yourself, you know, are my goals similar to their goals? Because they're giving advice based on, you know, their view and their experiences and their fears and their wants. So you have to ask yourself, you know, is this align with what I want? Because sometimes you may want something completely different than the person giving you advice, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, and again, they're giving you advice based on what they think and what they've gone through and what they would want shared with them. So you have to be mindful of that. But um, ultimately, I felt those, those feelings. Those are the feelings that I could say I felt the most of. Um, you know, being able to wake up with my children and not feel like I was just rushed to hurry up and do everything in that, you know, that period uh, of the morning that we had available. Because, you know, once I would get in the car and take them to school, there would be no coming back home when I was working my nine to five, it would be going straight to work. So now that I had the flexibility to drop them off, come back home and work, I just didn't feel as stressed. And like I said, I, I just was able to think of more ideas. Some people ask me, you know, how do you think of this? How did you think of doing this? My business didn't start off where is that now? I didn't have drop shipping. I did not have an ebook. I didn't have a podcast. Um, okay. Okay. When your brother's getting, we have to sit up, okay? Okay. 
Um, and we're not driving for those of you that, that are wondering, we're just like in line again at another school. So, but, um, cause we're in a parking lot at the school, but like I was saying, you know, I, my business wasn't where is that now? I didn't have half of the services, um, nor products that I have now. You know, I started with what I could start with, with what my vision was at that particular point. And at that particular point, my vision was selling hair extensions. And then it grew to offering hair extensions in bulk. And that was it for a while. You know, I, I didn't think about opening a salon. I didn't think about public speaking. I didn't think about website creation. None of that. That all came later with, you know, the time and ability to create. Not saying that you can't create while you're working a nine to five. I'm just speaking for me personally. You know, I want it. I want it pretty much what I have now. I, I wanted that and I'm thankful and blessed that I have it. I don't flaunt it around, um, you know, as a tool to brag. I, I speak on it as a tool to uplift and remind everyone that it's possible. You know, it's possible. And I was even told before, you know, hey, uh, you know, you don't, you don't act like a lot of people that sell hair extensions. So maybe you want to take pictures like this, or maybe you want to start talking like this, but I stuck true to myself. I stuck true to myself and people respect that. Not saying everyone does and not saying that I couldn't get more views if I acted a certain way or did a certain, you know, thing. I'm just saying that, you know, it's possible to be yourself, to act in integrity and for God to bless you with what it is you're looking for. That's possible. Okay, sit back, baby, and leave them alone. So, um, that's where I'm pretty much going to wrap this video up at. I'm going to be doing more content on my thinking process and my feelings transitioning from my 9 to 5 to a full-time entrepreneur. So, again, if you want to hear more videos and see more videos um, regarding that, make sure that you are subscribed, please. Um, and your post notifications are turned on. That way you don't miss when I do upload. I do want to thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.